Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, tomorrow is World Environment Day, and the United Nations has chosen reimagine, recreate, and restore as its theme. They ask us to be bold, not timid. Earlier this week, a coalition of New Brunswick public interest organizations presented a model bill for an environmental bill of rights, an act to protect children, all New Brunswickers, and nature. In order to entrench a right to a healthy environment in law, the, vil the, the communities of Sackville, Bertrand, Gagetown, and Tacadie have already adopted declarations in support of entrenching a right to a healthy environment in law. New Brunswickers are reimagining how legislation can be written to secure our well-being. Will the Minister of Environment join them and table a bill to establish a right to a healthy environment to safeguard our children, yes or no? The Minister of Environment in the gallery. <clears throat> Thank you very much. The member opposite for the, uh, the ideas to move ahead with. We're certainly open at the environment for ideas for moving bills ahead, and we're certainly all about the environment. And regarding some of the accomplishments this past uh, year, there's a lot to go, including the uh, climate change money coming up, which you'll hear soon. And the member opposite and others be very happy to hear about that, the $36 million we spread across departments, and part of that is education. So yes, we'll look at all ideas and uh, take it into serious consideration. Thank you. The member for Farrington South, the leader of the party. Well, so much for reimagining, Mr. Speaker. How about restoring our environment? The 2005 study found that almost 300 industrial chemi chemicals are found in infant cord blood. In January, a study found microplastics in human placentas. And we know from many studies that glyphosate is found in our urine. Many New Brunswickers feel that we have a cancer epidemic. What used to be primarily a disease of the elderly and smokers has become more common in non-smoking adults and children. Why don't we just prohibit the release of cancer-causing pollutants into people's workplaces and out into the wider environment? That would be bold. That would be restorative. During the 1970s, Premier Richard Hatfield boldly enacted most of the environmental laws still with us today, but they haven't evolved in order to protect our children and adults. Will the minister amend the Clean Environment Act to end the release of cancer-causing agents into our environment, at work, over our forests, onto our food, and into our air and water? The Minister of Environment in the, in the gallery. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, for the question across the way. And as the uh, Member knows we're meeting this at uh, well, the end of June for our climate change uh, committee, and part of that is actually four days, I believe, is set aside for discussing the exact topic, and we look forward to having his in input at that time. Thank you.